the Tougaloo Nine, as we were called, was the first event that actively opened up civil rights integration in the state of Mississippi. This was the cradle that rocked the babe of civil rights in Mississippi. We talked about uh, the kinds of things that we wanted to do to make a difference. And um, the input was made and uh, we came up with, uh, why don't we do a read-in? It was not uh, something that just happened. It was really uh, planned. At that particular time, we had to be so tense and so, but yet relaxed. We had to, so many things we had to remember, so many things that we had to be in, in, in charge of. We really had to go into that library with a book that could not be found in the colored library. So it was all a plan. The books that we looked for were books that we definitely knew that they were not going to have at the colored library, which was just a small little place. So that gave us a reason to go to the white library. I had to dress. One of the things I had to dress so that I had everything I needed with me. And what I wore was something that would keep me warm, that would keep me safe, that would give me some sense of comfort in case they had the billy sticks and the dogs. And they did. So we went to the card catalogs and that's where they found most of us looking for the books. But we did get a book and we did sit down. And one of the girls told us later, she says, she was sitting there so sophisticated with reading and when the officer came to her and she just knew that everything was gonna be all right. And then when she really realized the book was upside down, it seemed like three days that we were in jail. People told us that they wanted to see us, they wanted to come and see us, so they wanted to bring us things, but they wouldn't let us. They said that they took things to the jail for us. And actually, we came back home in our same clothing. After we had our sit-in, uh, Jackson State expelled several of their students who came to be supportive of us uh, on the night of our jailing and also uh, there were people who had problems with the law, uh, lots of people, and some of them were hurt uh, when we went to jail. They didn't want the people to come out to support us in going to jail. Now, my family had a small, uh, we called it a recreational place, but it was a gas station, and it had a little place where my mom would sell hot hamburgers and hot dogs. And um, so after this all happened, the Ku Klux Klan rode horses into our establishment to intimidate our family. And they talked about firing my dad from the end of the paper mill. I went back every year and I got to see the growth. My brothers are all back there except for one. So I got to see how Mississippi has developed, how it has grown. I got to see how principles became uh, regional principles, not just at the smaller black schools. Now, um, you never know um, who is going to be your principal because they're going on the merits of the persons now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had in my hometown two or three black mayors. Uh, the council is pretty much uh, well mixed. In fact, the mixture back there in Mississippi is better than it is here. I don't think that I was ever held back by my background. I think my background enriched me so that I can reach out to all people. And not only reach out to all people, but that I always try to enlighten. If I can't enlighten someone, then I feel as though I'm not doing a good job.